Simon, can you tell us a bit about what this uh, yeah, of what course. this is? Well, Repousse, um the word repousse came to England around 1700. Uh, John Tiju brought repousse to England and incorporated it with blacksmithing. And um, but going right back to the early Bronze Age, we'd see repousse happening. This is just a little simple children's book, but you can see repousse here on this shield, which is um, bronze. Um, if you flip through these books, you can see repousse all over the place. You can see it on this helmet, on this necklace, or this shroud there. Just all over the place, you can see it. Um, so what we're doing here is simple versions of it, which I have some samples. This one here, somebody's done. Um, it's really strong because what Repousse does is it it puts strength into the material and you work from both sides. That's what Repousse means. It's a French word. It means working from both sides. So you'd work in the back and push those areas out. And these raised areas here, you'd work on the other side and push these out. We start off with this piece of copper here. This is um, recycled copper that we're using in these workshops. But um, the principle is that it's 100% it's copper. Um, it work hardens and when it comes from the, the mill it will be in a work hardened state so it's got its strength. So what we need to do is anneal this copper and that's bringing it up in a fire to a dull red and then quenching it immediately in water and then it makes it more malleable and ductile so we can do this so we can push it and shunt it about. But if I kept doing this for a while all over uniformly it would start to work harden and become brittle and crack and split. So we don't want this to happen when we're working it so we anneal it again and we can keep on doing this process and stretch the material out so this item here we, it's possible that we can do this from that by annealing it and just all with hammers um, working from the back pushing these areas out and then running along with a long chisel around here to push those down so initial artwork on this for instance was just like this very simple artwork and this is thick, thicker, sorry, thicker gauge material. Here you can see how thick that is compared with what we're doing here. The thickness is quite, is, you know, quite a lot. It's almost like three times as much. So this is harder to move. So this is the early stages of this. Um, and then we can carry on doing really refined detail work thereafter and refining it and getting the, the head in shape because at the moment you can see it's totally deformed. Um, because we're working on certain areas but you can see where you work from inside and then from this side we push the nose down and then push it out from the inside and so on it's very time consuming um, but very rewarding and you can just see there's a piece of work which is 4,000 years old which was quite small and really refined detail and textures on the animals etc so we're just bringing that technique to life See where those two lines are that have gone astray? There. Because you've been so gentle, if we put this tool in between the two, just there, and then gently try and join them up. And see what shape. See that there? It's quite sharp. You can quickly file those edges off and make it smooth, and then you can do some little decorations inside with chisels. Yeah, it's a little bit. 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 Yeah